So I began uh, working with bone, literally bones from animals in the kitchen after I would do some cooking, which is really emerged after the death of my mother in a tribute to her where uh, her spirit seemed to be lingering in the kitchen. And uh, I became, I would say, I wouldn't say I became obsessed with questions about death because they, it was always a, a particular interest to me. But one of the things about the, uh, the bones as I began to process them and try to purify them and whiten them, I would discover that they would morph sometimes overnight. I would wake up in the morning and find a new little hole in the bone or a discoloration. And so I became fascinated with what kind of process was going on with the bones after. And uh, going, thank you, <laughs> thank you for reading my mind. And um, became also very interested in the space between, the space between parts of the body, the space between me and my mother. <coughs> uh, I'd been very uh, caring for her when she was ill and felt like I became fascinated with the transition in her body toward the end of her life and also as she died. So. Uh, um, this whole series is from um, a series of work called The Space Between, where I'm contemplating the space between us. And uh, space, this is um, poaching some things from my mother's closet. <laughs> Literally, she'd probably be turning over right about now. Um, I, my mother was very interested in fashion and her own appearance and um, her closet was like a whole world, a whole interior world. We can go forward, so thank you. And also uh, really I was riveted by the questions that I was unable to ask her not only because she had passed away but also in life with her. Uh, she was very enigmatic and I had a lot of questions left so some of this series is about a confrontation with her and with questions that I had growing up with such an enigmatic presence. Uh, I spent some time during this period in New Orleans, and there, I don't know if people have been to New Orleans, but when you see these incredible musical processions coming down the street, you don't know if it's a wedding or a funeral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because their, their connection to celebration of life and death is so amazing and sort of commingled. So this, um, the this is called Sunrise Sunset. It's about that kind of commingling of life and death and celebration that I discovered in New Orleans. This and the next one also is about that. I became very interested also in sewing and suturing because as I was doing all this processing of bones all over my house, all over my backyard, <laughs> all over the place, when my grandchildren would come and visit, they would run back to where I <laughs> I found, so I was really immersed in the processing of bones, and then I found out that I needed to have open heart surgery. So when I went to chat with the surgeon about it, I said, you know, give me a lay of the land. He says, well, it's like this. It's like a splitting open, uh, you know, the sternum. So um, it seemed like the work then became like a foreshadowing of this commingling of my body with the body of my mother and a confrontation with the breaking of bones and the repair of bone. Uh, this is, um, in preparation for, the, for that surgery, I uh, got somebody to break me into the cadaver lab at one of the hospitals in New York and spend a day with the hearts. And so this is uh, a contemplation about that experience that I was going to have. I'm very interested in tools, so I wrap a lot of things in tool, they're sewing on the back of this, so a lot of suturing going on, a lot of tool. And uh, then I became interested in totem, and instead of connecting the bone with metal, which is what I had been doing before, drilling them and connecting them with metal, I became interested instead in sewing them, and sewing them up. So, um, and then I was also interested in going as far back as I could in understanding where the bone came from. So now I am becoming a butcher. <laughs> uh, to, and to have the experience of understanding the animal in a more intimate way. And um, this is the, these are some bones that I butchered 
um, under a great teacher. <laughs> okay. This series then uh, is um, a series called Romeo and Juliet, and these are images that I printed and buried in the backyard for various amounts of time, and then I dug them up, and I don't know how much people bury paper, but here's a tip, they migrate. So, and, you know, with the elements, so you bury them here and they sort of migrate over there. So you dig up the backyard to find them, and a lot of them fell apart, as you can see. And then I sewed them back together, and this again is um, a conversation about uh, love and fire and uh, burial and recovery. And this is from a show where I use the cross again. Uh, in the space between in Romeo and Juliet. This is a detail from that with the kind of frenzied suturing. And then we can, we can go on. Okay. This is uh, the beginning and then Scott, it's like the next four. This is a series uh, called The Exquisite Corpse. And for those of you who are familiar with the story of Exquisite Corpse, and it's about uh, either through words or sometimes through images here. It's about taking disassemblage and what it's like to put things back together. It's kind of like um, in psychoanalysis where there's free association and the returning of disparate images. I'm very interested in chiffon and more sewing. And um, these individual, this is the ascension. Um, <coughs> we could go on. And this is a, um, a photograph I took of a hummingbird that was caught in my studio mm -hmm. and was frantically trying to get out and he or she plunged into the sink. Mm -hmm. it's now this is the edge of the sink, so this hummingbird was, had his nose to the sink and I started to take pictures of him and about an hour later he resurrected. Mm -hmm. and st and fluttered and flew away mm -hmm. and found his way out of the studio. So um, this is going to probably be the beginning of a series from the story <coughs> Angels and Insects. And also I'm beginning to think about it's, it's Frankenstein's anniversary. He's 200 years old, right? <laughs> which is really exciting to me. So I'll be doing a series about that. And this is the beginning of that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, chiffon, is that digital printing on the chiffon or <coughs> are the images uh, on there? They're, they're printed. They're printed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. I'm not sure where you get the bones. You're not making <laughs> a lot of clay, are you? Are they real bones? No, they're real real bones. Yeah, they're real bones. From um, It started, as I said, I mean, the fascination came from really being in the kitchen and with the spirit of my mother in the kitchen, and um, she was a great cook. And um, I became friendly with these fantastic butchers who are also artists in Harlem, called Harlem Shambles. And one day I went in there and I was, you know, really bummed out after the death of my mother, and I start picking these bones. And one of the butchers said it to me, I'm pretty sure you're not buying this to cook, like, what's up? <laughs> so I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to like the sob so oh, my mother died, I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm butchering these bones, and he's like, I hear you, sister, you tell your story. And then he showed me these pictures, this is so amazing, these butchers all were doing uh, work about their mothers. It was yeah. really, <laughs> no, about the loss of their mothers, it was sort of incredible. So I worked with them for a couple of years, but then I started to feel like I was not connected enough to the process, and I thought I should be butchering my own bones, and I found this fantastic young woman. She's 26, she's just a total warrior, and she's teaching me to butcher with this incredible, steady and tender hand. So they're, they're bovine. I have a bovine valve now, so I feel in connection with, <laughs> with the cow. And, um, so, and I work sometimes in fish, which is super difficult. <coughs> I'm very interested in the spine, so if I can get my hands on a spine and the ribs. I hope no one's going to dinner after this. <laughs>
vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. Did all of this work help you process the death of your mom? It's a great question. Because of I just lost mine like three weeks ago, and I understand what. I feel for you. Um, I will tell you, I'm a psychoanalyst by training, mm -hmm. and this process tells me that um, digging into your suffering and digging into the psyche is a really dignified thing to do. There's no way around it. And it, it's amazing, I mean, to discover that it's kind of true, that mourning yields something that has to do with rejuvenation. I think if you can tolerate it. So these bones, I mean, I used to, I kind of got more master over it now, but the first couple of years I was like bludgeoned all the time. So I go staying up all night in a bone trance, naking myself. I do a lot of writing about it. It really helped. So I encourage you to find your medium for sure. Yeah. It doesn't have to be bones. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.